Hey guys, what is up? NYK31 here, bringing you some Madden 16 Mutt Salary Cap gameplay. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Madden Mutt Salary Cap uh, live stream tournament, the first couple of days of that sucker, and uh, what went down, and my reactions to it, and all of that good stuff. Um, as some of you may or may not know, this is the final big Madden live stream tournament of the year. So all of the um, heavy hitters of the tournament world are there, and they're going at it with their much salary cap teams. And you know, at this time of year, everyone's lineup is stacked with these golden ticket wide receivers, which have you know 100 and beyond spec catch and lineups with um, players with 100 plus hit power and everyone's teams is juiced to the hilt. So what do you think is going to happen? A complete and utter circus is going to break out. That's what's going to happen. With Golden Ticket, Mike Evans, and Dez Bryant making spec catches all over the field. So there you go. And, you know, with that you know, in mind while I was watching it. One, you know, you know what you're going to get in those things. You're going to get in a situation where you have kids playing for 50K. It's the wild, wild west. It's no holes barred. It's no rules. Dudes are going to wing and fling and do whatever the hell they have to do to get that money. They're going to run 5 million hot routes to break apart the uh, coverage logic. They're going to run DB loop and crossfire blitzes to high heaven against tanked OLs with golden ticket to Avion Clowney, who was just wrecking shop in every game that you saw. Golden ticket Bud Dupree slicing through, you know, bad old lines on that DB loop and crossfire blitz. You have 100 hit power, 100 zone coverage, 100 man coverage, Ronnie Lotts and Sean Taylor's out there just blowing people up. You have 105 spec catch, Mike Evans and Des Bryant out there skying over people. Ultimate legend Herman Moore, Antonio Gates, Tony Gonzalez doing the same thing. Ultimate legend Eric Dickerson plowing through everybody. You add that all up and you get what you get. Is it the most aesthetically pleasing football from a purist perspective no <laughs> it absolutely isn't the tactics and the gameplay is you know ridiculous is it entertaining to watch honestly I gotta say I enjoy watching it I watched every single game of that stream I had the thing going pretty much all day and you know it's fun to watch it is I'm not gonna lie the only guy I don't enjoy watching is Problem. I think he's absurd. But, but other than that, I enjoyed watching the event. I enjoyed watching the last one. And, you know, that's okay. It's okay to have fun. It's okay to laugh at yourself. There was this guy named Trez. He was kind of like the quote-unquote people's champion because he played, you know, pure stock sim ball, quote-unquote. And there's another guy who I like. Um, that guy, Piano. He plays a good style as well, a good unique style, which um, resembles an actual real offense and defense more than anyone else's. It's okay to just kick back, enjoy those kind of things, and not take yourself so seriously all the time. This community takes itself so serious every single day. Grown men arguing over this game over Twitter and advocating their little causes over YouTube and social media every single day. And then when you turn on a Madden tournament, what do you have? You have kids two weeks out of high school you know, barely a couple of years into college who are broke and trying to make a little money. You really think they give a single damn about people making daily flaw videos and fighting over social media? No, they're spending four to six hours every single day trying to break down every nook and cranny of this game and get away with 
as much as they possibly can get away with to win that cash. That's it. That is all they care about. It's just a different lane. The Sim Heads have their lane. The CFM guys have theirs. The tournament guys have their world. The one thing that we all have in common, no matter what lane that is, is that we all want the game to play as clean as possible. But make no mistake, the guys in that tournament lane, each year they're going to find whatever they need to find to get an edge and to give themselves the best shot to win that money. One thing I can guarantee you is that these tournaments, they're not going away. If anything, they're only going to get bigger. We're in early summer now and you have 3,000 people on a Saturday night last night watching that live stream. Uh, about 2,500 people watching it on a Friday night, again, in the summer. There's a lot of things you can be doing with your Friday and Saturday nights and you've got, you know, 2,500 to 3,000 people watching it well past the peak time of the Madden year. So this is not going away, folks. It's only going to get bigger as we, you know, continue to progress through this esports era. And it's giving all parties involved a heck of a lot of exposure. Someone said that it was streaming on or being broadcasted on ESPN3. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but, you know, maybe someone can verify that. But this is not going away. This is a locomotive that's just getting started. And also, no matter how authentic the game gets, there's always going to be people that are going to be better than others. You're not going to level the playing field to the point where someone who's bad is going to magically be able to compete with someone who knows what they're doing on the sticks. There's a reason why the same people tend to be good all of the time, both in the online CFM world and also in the tournament world. It's because there are just people who are flat out better on the sticks than others. That's always going to be what puts people over the top. How well you can command those sticks. So that's all I got on that. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Would love to hear your thoughts on uh, what you watched. And I'll talk to you all later. Peace.